Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to show you some mini trifold cards. Art Impressions has done some trifolds before. They've been full size cards with panels that flip out and all sorts of things. And they've now come up with these telescoping types of trifolds. So they give you a sneak peek as to what's inside the card rather than the way they've worked in the past. So if you want to Google the other ones, I'll uh, leave a link to some of them in the description down below, but I want to show you these ones that telescope inward and they give you all the di directions, the measurements and everything. But what I did find was that on an 11 by four and a quarter piece of paper, I get this little thing that happens if I use the exact measurements and my front panel ends up a little bit short. And even the inside panel, I thought well, maybe that one will go all the way to the edge and it didn't either. If you adjust by an just a little tiny bit of an eighth of an inch on your scores, then you can make that work out right. But what I decided to do, because I was originally going to color it with Copics, and I changed my mind because I realized Copics go through the back and I didn't want it showing on the inside of the card. So I used watercolor paper and I'm going to watercolor it instead. And I'm using three and five eighths and seven and three eighths for my measurements. Because what that's going to do is give me one panel that's going to fit snugly just before that fold. Fold the other side over and use my bone folder and my, uh, my board to get that perfect. And then just mark the edge so that I can cut off that extra piece. Watercolor paper is generally 12 inches, the, a lot of the pads that I use. So I had a little bit of play and that allowed the card to end at the right spot. I'm going to use my Misty to do the stamping and I'm going to put a piece of acetate in there so I can stamp on that as a test first and that way I can make sure it's in the right spot exactly where I want it because these stamps are clean stamps they're not clear so I can't actually see where it's going to be so I'm going to get it all kind of lined up close the Misty and then when I open it back up the stamp sticks to it turn it around so you can see what I'm doing even if it's going to be sideways here and I'm going to stamp it onto the acetate so I can see the placement. Is that where I want it on my card? If, if not, I can move my stamp around. That one I'm pretty happy with. So I'll just remove the plastic and I will put down some ink onto the stamp and stamp it onto my, my card. Now, my card's hanging out of the misty. I should have put my magnets down. So spank me for not doing that. I was going to re-stamp a little bit just to get a heavier line and I decided not to because I was a little worried that I would end up with the paper moving. So my next step is going to be to die cut this piece first. So I'm going to tape it down with a piece of washi tape and then run it over to my die cut machine and then trace the inside of that die onto the next panel. So get your card closed and just trace it. You can erase this pencil line easily and then do it again. Set it up on a piece of acetate and see if it's where you want it. It's not. I want to slide it over a little so I kind of get an idea. I want to kind of go over maybe half a block. So I'll move my stamp over on the grid board half a block and then use my magnets like I'm supposed to to hold the paper down because it'll hold it still and I can re-stamp if I need to. And then I can stamp my image on there. And then once again I can go grab my the second die, there's two dies that come with it, figure out which direction it goes and die cut it. And now you can see we're getting that telescoping going on. And if I trace that line into the inside of the card, then I can just, I, I'm just going to hand stamp my little bunny, but you could, if you're doing multiples, you could set it up again and stamp that on the inside as well. So then the bunny's going to show up through the little hole as well. And all that's left now is the watercoloring. And I have a good selection of all different kinds of Daniel Smith watercolors. So I'm just going to grab different colors. I'm not mixing, but if you have a set of like the six essentials, you can mix all of these colors from those. Just mix up a bunch of little, little dots of different ones. Or if you have the dot charts, this would be a great use for that because you only need a little bit of each color and you can try them all out and compare perhaps all of the reds and all the pinks and see what colors you like best by painting them in a real world situation like this. So I will link you to that in the description down below as well as all the stamps and goodies. Now I did not wait for my tulips to dry. So you can see my green is seeping into some of my tulips. So do as I say, not as I do and be a little more patient. 
I just wanted to get her done because I was in a hurry when I was painting this. But it's such a loose image that it's not really going to matter. And you can tell I'm not even worrying about shading. I'm just dropping color in. And when you've got a really loose, fresh springtime, summertime image like this, it's so easy to just paint and be loose and don't get stressed out. Don't get yourself all worried about it. Just keep moving and get your image painted. And if you do a whole bunch of these, you can get all of your greens done at once on all of them. And then by the time you get back to doing the flowers, you won't have any wet paint next to where you're coloring the next portion. So word to the wise there. So I'm going to use a couple different greens. And then for these little flowers that are hanging down, I just put some purple at the top. And then I rinsed and dried my brush so I could just kind of pull a little bit of the color down so that they would kind of fade into white. And sorry about the crazy zooming thing, whatever is going on with my camera. And then I added a little, little drops of pink at the top of each one of those purple ones. And I'm gonna drop a little bit more color into my yellow flowers because they weren't making me happy. And now we got the little bunny on the inside. I've erased my pencil line so that he gets all lined up and add some ground underneath, which is of course, soaking in some of the yellow from the bunny and I'm going to be a little more careful now since I I found that I messed that up and go carefully around with very very light blue and then drop more heavy blue into it once I know that I've kept my blue away from the bunny and that it's dry enough to do that so I'm going to drop a little bit of brightness in there I'll use a little bit of water and a drier brush a cleaner cleaner dryer brush to soften that outside edge and then of course pink we got to put a little bit of pink in the ears and in the little flowers and there is the finished telescope card where you get the little preview of the bunny he's so cute and the flowers you know they didn't need any great detail or anything they just had to have a little bit of color in them because everybody's going to be looking to get to that little bunny on the inside of the, the trifold card and there's a stamp, um, blessings to you. You can use this all year long, even if it's got tulips, who cares? Do them all year long because there's it's such a cute card. And this is another one of the trifolds. I wanted to just show it to you. This one is on Nina. And this one I did in colored pencil because I, again, didn't want the color to go through. So doing them in colored pencil works great. Or if you die cut this out of Bristol board, you could use your Zig Clean color markers to do it. but. There's a little kitty on the inside of this one. So I'll link you to all the supplies in the description down below, as well as some of the big trifolds. So you can see what I mean when I say these are smaller and different. And here's a few other cards you might want to take a look at. The one on the right talks a little bit about how to mix your colors for um, getting a, a variety. So if you have just a few colors, that one, uh, the hydrangea is painted entirely with six little colors of paint. Alrighty guys, you take care and have a great day. If you want to subscribe, you can do that or watch any of these videos or go see more on my blog. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.